So, how do we get to that point to make the diagnosis? Well, we film the vocal cords. And before we actually take the picture of it, we listen. And if you can listen and hear a problem, then it's possible to see it. When I see a patient, there are three parts to my exam. That's the history. That is, I listen to what the complaint is. I listen to the vocal cords and ask the person to make high and low pitches, soft and loud sounds. And I try to listen specifically for where there's air leak or roughness, because then I know when I look with the endoscope, I want to look at the exact same setup where I heard the problem. And interestingly enough, most patients when they come to the doctor don't want to sound bad. They want to sound good, but in fact what I want to hear is the bad voice because that's how I'll find the problem. Let's take this patient here, a 40 year old female who's a teacher. Six years ago she lost her voice completely and since then she continues to lose it frequently during the year. She says that she's leaking air. She says that speaking requires a lot of effort. The more she uses it, the worse it gets. Sometimes she has only a whisper. This hoarseness tends to occur more during the school year when she's using her voice or more during the cold or allergy season. And she said overall it keeps getting more frequent. When we listen, we're going to go through a series of tests of what I would call the vocal capabilities battery. That is, we're going to listen to her read, we're going to listen to how long she can make a sound on a single breath. That'll tell us how much she's leaking air. Her lowest pitch, her highest pitch, we'll listen to her yell, and we'll listen to her voice soft, and we'll listen to her with vegetative sound. So I liken this to you go to your family doctor with a heart problem, and he doesn't find anything on the EKG, so you go off to the specialist, the cardiologist, and they run a stress test. They make you run on the treadmill, exercise the heart, and try to elicit the problem. So we're going to try to elicit her hoarseness by running this group of tests. So let's take a listen to her voice. Here she is reading. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. So as I listen to it, I don't hear a problem. She's got a clear voice. It's about G3 sharp on the piano. Pretty good there. Let's listen to her maximum phonation time. E Now, I'm starting to hear a little roughness in her voice, and she only went for 13 seconds. Now, a normal, healthy 40-year-old should probably be able to do 20 or 25 seconds on a breath of e. The further the vocal cords are apart, the more air leak there is, the shorter the time. So we have a sense that we're narrowing in on her problem here, because as a public speaker, a teacher, she's got a short phonation time. Now we'll take a listen to her lowest pitch. So I would describe this as vocal fry. In fact, it's a rough quality of the voice. We're getting a hint that there's a double pitch there. Her lowest note is F3. Now we'll take a listen to her highest pitch. Now, as she went up, she was clear. And then when she got to her very highest pitch here, we heard a scratch, a, a double pitch, a roughness. So I'm asking her to go up. And I'm a male, and I can go higher than she did before her voice cut out. So there, we can hear that something is wrong with her voice again at the high end. Now we'll listen to a loud sound. Hey! Hey! She sounds pretty clear there. So when she puts enough air through, her vocal cords vibrate evenly and they don't leak air. Now we'll listen to her singing softly. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. She doesn't end up singing at a high enough pitch where we are likely to hear the problem with her voice cutting out. And then lastly I listen to vegetative sounds or coughing. <coughs> yeah. And they sound pretty good. Let's take a look with the endoscope and see what we see in this example patient. Put the camera in, go through the nose, take a look at the vocal cords. From this viewpoint, we're about halfway down to the vocal cords, and to my eye, the vocal cords look pretty normal still. So we haven't found the problem. Now I've put some lidocaine on, some topical anesthesia, 
um, right down on the vocal cords, getting a very close, detailed look. And they still look pretty normal to me. I heard her voice cut out as she went higher. So I'm going to ask her to go higher. She's going to pull the vocal cords longer and longer. And that's where I heard the problem. What you can begin to see is that she has a swelling on both vocal cords. In fact, if I stop the picture here, we can see that these are polyps. They're almost translucent. We can see almost through them. So we have a segment here and a segment here, and we're hearing the, the air leak. And at this very high pitch, very close view, there's the two gaps, and that describes her hoarseness. So when we were far away, we couldn't see it, but we knew to look at high pitch, we got close, and we could see air leak, we could see roughness if they would break up into two pitches. So in summary, voice is generated only by something that vibrates. That means in the larynx we want to see the edges of the vocal cord because that's the only thing that vibrates. We can ignore the color, we can ignore all the structures around the area. Hoarseness is caused either by the unwanted leak of air or the irregular leak of air. And we can take the definition of voice, the definition of hoarseness, put it together during an examination, we can focus our attention in, and we can find the problem by minding the gap, looking at the gap between the vocal cords for either of these two problems. I'm Dr. James Thomas. Thank you for listening.